Welcome back everyone to another video. So we reverse the bullish engulfing weekly candle with a bearish engulfing. Now CPI was worse than expected. Now everyone is pricing in 75 to 100 basis point hike instead of a 50 basis point. Now did you catch the talk? Fortunately, we did. We have some very interesting data here to share coming into next week and why we might have a potential bullish reversal. So make sure you watch to the end and let's talk more about it in this video. So we had a Monday pop, which I was ex actually expecting a dip if you watch the last video so that we can actually go higher on CPI. But when it didn't dip, I was actually leaning towards a sell the news event on CPI, which means a drop upon the release of data. I even told my guys two minutes before CPI that we will drop upon the release of the information for whatever reason it is, because if you knew I was actually bullish on the data. Okay, but we sold off huge okay, when the CPI data came out higher than expected, especially when core CPI, which excludes energy and food. Okay, we even had one member now, Discord, that scalped the CPI day and made $400,000 in profits just on that day alone. Now, volatile days are great for trading, and that's why traders love volatility. But volatility kills both sides, and that's why you need to know how to trade the markets to maximize it. Now, you can join our private Discord community to get live market updates to help with your trading. So hop on over to the Patreon page down in the description box below to get access now. So for next week's outlook, we will have another volatile week coming in. Okay, we have housing data early in the week on Tuesday and Wednesday. We also do have FOMC, which is the key event next week, which falls on Wednesday as well. Okay, we do have his press conference right after that, which also usually gives us another round of volatility. Now we do have jobless claims on Thursday, as well as on Friday, Fed Power will be speaking again. Okay, the market has definitely priced in 75 basis point for now, which I did mention they will they were actually underpricing it two months back when everyone was talking about 50 basis point high. And 75 is now more or less what we're about to see, but do not rule out a 100 point hike that might plunge the markets further as only 30% have priced that in. Hopping over to the VIX, now daily chart still looks bullish overall, okay, after breaking out of this um, falling wedge. But the four hour and two hour charts actually do look like a pullback is incoming. Okay, so we'll be looking at um, VIX coming back down to the lower supports here at 25, 24, even 23. Okay, uh, and a possible rally coming in for the indices, which I'll explain more later. Okay, there's more than just the VIX. Um, currently, you can see that the VIX is struggling to break out of this supply zone here. Multiple hits trying to break above and failed so far. Okay, once on um, Fort Witching Friday, we actually did break above but got rejected at the 28.35 resistance. Okay, currently we are back in this zone. As long as we remain inside, we are looking more towards breaking down than up. Alright, so order blocks usually have to be broken in one clean sweep. Okay, so a candle directly up and then closes above it. And then probably another candle and then we come back to retest it. So the fact that we have been inside this order block for multiple weeks okay we are looking more towards testing this bottom demand zone here around 23 so look out for the indices to rally as the vix do a pullback okay we should look at a reversal on the vix around this level okay to go up higher to retest the supply zone here again hop over to the s p 500 spy etf so the spy almost came in to retest the head and shoulders re uh, breakout line here but we got a huge sell okay, on CPI data after retesting the 410 resistance. Okay, so you can see the 410 is a pretty strong horizontal resistance here. Okay, it was support, but after breaking down below, it becomes a resistance. All right, so if we can't even cross the 410, then this head and shoulders breakout line is a pretty strong resistance as of now. Okay, but we are back into the demand zone over here. Okay, currently with bullish divergences on the daily chart and all the hourly charts. 
okay one hour all the way up to four hours now i'm leaning towards a long bias here if we are able to hold the lows of the quad reaching okay because you can see we do have a pretty bullish hammer candle here it's not a very long um bottom wick but it's still more or less a hammer candle okay so usually with a pattern like this you should see a short-term relief rally at least to cover up the gap here okay or even retest the supply zone here okay it could also turn out to be a reversal where it comes back all the way up to retest um this zone which happens to be the head and shoulders breakout line and also the downtrend line okay we will not know which one plays out so we can only monitor as it goes on okay so as long as it holds its low here um i am leaning towards a long bias okay so for resistance will be 386.8 391.5 and 396.4 your support will be 3, 380 372 and 369 okay i will show you guys more at the end of the video why there is a potential bullish pattern on the index aside from just this um hammer candle here and the bullish divergences popular to the nasdaq 100 triple q etf so the triple q actually did retest the downtrend line as well as the head and shoulders breakout line okay the neckline so we retested the next day we fell very hard on cpi data okay so as of now we close below the sell demand zone uh, so, sorry the supply zone and above the demand zone okay above the key support here at 287 so this support has been tested multiple times as well so it is a pretty strong support okay same thing leading long bias as long as it holds the lows um below the court reaching above the court reaching okay so as long as it holds the lows of the quad reaching, I am leaning towards a bounce towards the gap fill or the supply zone or even up to the downtrend line. Okay, so look out for your resistance. It will be 294, 297 and 304. Your support will be 287, 284 and 279. So the triple Q also do have bullish divergences on the daily chart and the hourly time frames on multiple indicators okay to apple now apple also has bullish divergences on multiple indicators on the daily chart as well okay we held the 150 support okay if you notice the 150 was the resistance on the june and also we broke out of this resistance as currently acting as support on july okay we broke out we retest and then we hit higher currently we are holding it as support so i do expect a small bounce or even a larger one if it wants to okay towards the um supply zone or even the gap fill here all right so look out for your resistance will be 154.6 157 and 161.5 your support will be 150 147.5 and 143.6 Hopping over to Tesla. Now, Tesla has a very different chart compared to many of the large caps. So, you notice many of the large caps has already plunged. Okay. Some of it has broken the lows of June. All right. Like Microsoft and Google. Some is um, like Apple retesting uh, previous resistance now acting as support. For Tesla wise, it is still near the top of the channel. All right. In fact, Tesla is now looking very, very bearish on the daily chart and also the hourly charts okay most of the large cap has bullish divergences tesla has bearish divergences okay tesla looks like it's about to head back down okay a lot lower but it could also test the supply zone here first even slightly breaking it maybe to get the to grab all the shorts liquidity before it's heading back right down Okay, so look out for tesla currently the resistance will be 310 then the high will be 315 it could also break slightly higher all the way up here to 318.7 okay your support will be 300 291 and also 279 now hopping over to meta the meta has a very strong bullish divergence on the daily chart okay but proper risk management is needed because meta already broke the consolidation zone so there's a consolidation zone here and here 
if we broke the laws, all right. But sometimes it could be a accumulation phase. This could be a spring and then right back up. All right. So to validate this as a spring, okay, we need to get a quick drop and pop, which means a V-shaped recovery up. So if we don't pop right back up, Meta will hit towards one three five, which is a support here. And this is my initial target for strong ready to take place since three months ago. Okay, so we will see if we do get a drop and pop, or we will hit all the way right down to 135, where we'll probably do another consolidation or a relief rally from there. So look out for your support. Your support will be 143 and 135, resistance 148, 152, and 156. Popular to AMD. Um, AMD is creating bullish divergences coming into the 7450 support here. Okay, but AMD now seems slightly weaker on the daily chart compared to NVIDIA. Okay, previously I told you it was the other way around. NVIDIA will create a new low while AMD is still pretty strong. Okay, so NVIDIA already made the new low um, two, three weeks back. I, I said that way before. Okay, right now AMD is looking weaker than NVIDIA. Okay, but we could still see a retest towards the 8150, which is the below the gap, or even cover fully the gap and retest the 8410 resistance here. Okay, and then we will see if we break up to retest the supply zone here, or we come back and then we reverse right back down towards the 67 um, potential bullish zone to buy in. So look out for your support will be 74.50, 71.10 and also 66.9 or 67. Your resistance will be 78.50, 81.50 and 84.10. So hopping over to NVIDIA, this is the reason why I told you NVIDIA is now looking stronger on the daily chart. Okay, NVIDIA did a partial gap fill first, start of the week and then plunge to 1.30. Okay, 130 is the price objective I told you guys. Okay, if you have been following the channel, this is a key support and a buying point for NVIDIA. Okay, I said this three months to four months back. We did briefly break it for a bit. Okay, but right now we read it right back up and close the weekly chart above it. Okay, this is a very bullish case. Okay, currently we also have multiple bullish divergence on, on the daily, weekly and the hourly charts. Okay, I'm leading bullish buyers for NVIDIA now. 130 is a key support and should give it a bit of rally or even a very strong rally first before it comes back down to break the lows should this bear market continue lower. Okay, so look out for your key support 130. Okay, once we break this, we will come down to 123 and 117. If we do not break it and it holds, we will go back up to retest the 140 fill up this gap here all the way up to 151 and come back up to key resistance at 157. Hopping over to Alibaba. Now Alibaba failed to fill the gap okay at 95 over here. So I said this gap here is very important. If you do not fill this gap okay you will come back down to break this support here at 87. Okay so when you saw a huge rejection here okay an upper week rejection this was the time where you know it will break the 87 support. Okay, it is now briefly held by the 85 support, but it is still looking very, very weak. Okay, look out for the lower support to come into play. Okay, if the 87 do hold as a resistance currently. Alright, so we will see the 73 come back into play as long as the 87 holds as resistance. Okay, some people have been asking, they've been saying that they've been waiting very long for the lows to be retested again. Okay, and said the bottom is in, but sometimes you need patience. The okay, markets can trap and you know FOMO and all the new investors thinking that the bottom is in just because it wasn't tested for six months, only to retest it after that and break lower. Okay, so you must have patience in the market. When we hit 73 mark. Okay, one week before we hit the 73 mark, I already said that this is a potential buying zone. Buy here, we should get a huge relief rally. Okay, we got it. And then I said we should retest 73 and possi possibly even break lower towards the 60 levels. Okay, 
during this period a lot of people said we will not retest 73 we will not come back down to break lower okay right now it is looking pretty bearish on baba all right we broke a key support here currently okay about to hit lower still looking bearish no signs of flipping bullish yet okay unless some major catalyst comes in so now i'm hopping over to the nasdaq futures weekly chart okay i'll show you the reason why i'm actually leaning slightly bullish now okay short term not um long term long term i'm still technically bearish because of the macroeconomics you can't avoid that okay especially on qt with rising interest rate okay and the feds possibly not pivoting anytime soon okay but why short term i'm still bullish now okay i have been bullish after the cpi drop okay because we after we dropped we had multiple bullish conditions more bullish divergences i did tell the guys to not short the low okay and why i think that this could be a temporary low okay first thing weekly chart we close above previous week low okay this could be a potential hit fake okay we also do have a supply zone here a demand zone here we broke and then we close right above that demand zone this is a bullish looking look second thing pattern wise okay this is an engulfing pattern you could argue that but there's also another pattern called the stick sandwich okay where you get a red uh, red bar close and then a green one and then another red one okay and usually this happens um as a bullish reversal pattern okay if you get the opposite which is a green red and a green at the top of the chart that is usually a bearish reversal pattern so now this could be yes a bearish engulfing on a weekly it could also be a stick sandwich candlestick pattern chart okay and that will be a bullish reversal upwards to retest supply zone here and even resistance here okay last point okay why i'm leading bullish if you take notice on every quad reaching okay this is the week of the march quad reaching okay we had a bullish rally after that in fact we had a bullish rally on the week itself okay this was the week of the quad reaching and we had multiple weeks of rally after that currently this is the week of quad reaching we may have weeks or multiple weeks of rally after that now the reason why quad reaching um so far this year gives us a strong rally is because market makers are hedging the puts okay that they sell to us as retailers or even institution traders so when retailers and institution traders they buy puts which are sold to us by the market makers they usually hedge their puts and by hedging puts they have to short shares by shorting the shares it will cause the index to go lower so what happens after okay um the court reaching ends and the options expire or assign okay, what happens is usually um those options expire they get to close out their shorts so they have they think they are able to close out the hedges which is the short position and that creates a buy volume okay and that's why we head up after quad reaching okay so similarly we saw two weeks back i showed you guys a data about serious hedging taking place okay and that's why we had a sharp plunge because when we bought when um institution traders bought record amount of puts that means that market makers have to hedge record amount by shorting okay shorting the market so when they short the market that's when we had a huge plunge okay and after that right now when the things the options have expired there is a possibility that they will unhatch by going long to cover up their short position and that could show us a small or a larger relief rally coming into the weeks ahead all right so look out okay right now i'm still technically bullish until we break the lows of quad reaching i want to thank you guys for watching to the end do help to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not 
If you find the information useful and want to support the channel, you can hop on to the Buy Me A Coffee page or the Patreon page down at the description box below. Now, if you want to support through the Patreon, you do get access to our private Discord community for live market updates daily. Okay, that could help you on your trading or even your investing. As always, trade safe, invest wise, and I'll see you guys in the next one.